Good evening, everyone. Uh, we might make a start. Uh, my name is Hamish, and it's my great pleasure to lead us today uh, in today's evening of worship uh, through our Tenebrae service. Um, just very quickly with some housekeeping. Um, if you do need to use the bathrooms and you haven't been to this church before, uh, just uh, go out these doors over here and keep going that way until you reach the bathrooms at the Naval tools at the back. So what is this Tenebrae service? Well, Tenebrae is... Uh, it means shadows or darkness. And on this evening, we'll be remembering the, the shadows and the darkness experienced by Christ as he suffered on the cross for us. But this day is called Good Friday. Good Friday. What is, what is there possibly to call good about an innocent man going to the cross to die? It's not the act, but it's, it's the the goodness of Jesus that, that we worship and uh, that we call good and we remember today. Now, why is this so amazing, so incredible, so unbelievable? Romans 5 verses 6 to 8 helps map this out for us. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As we come together this evening to remember and reflect upon the goodness of what Jesus has done for us, I encourage you to worship and experience God deeply. Reflect upon God's grace through what Christ has done for you. During the night, we'll be experiencing the diminishing of light throughout the service in the particular pattern of Tenebrae service, and this will be through the progressive diminishing and putting out of the candles behind you. We will also worship through the singing of God's praise, and we'll also hear the passion narrative of Jesus dying on the cross narrated dramatically by some of our fellow church members. At the close of the service, you'll be asked to leave the church quietly, uh, reflecting and contemplating on the suffering that Jesus died, um, went through on the cross as he died for your sins. We'll begin our evening in a time of silence and personal prayer. Following that, we will pray collectively uh, with the following prayer on the screen. But before we do so, like I mentioned, uh, just take a few moments to reflect on the words and what the cross of Jesus means to you and pray by yourself. And then in a moment, we'll read out the prayer together. If you're ready, why don't we pray together? Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, when we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. 
Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes this life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing our next song.
We will now hear the Passion Narrative based off John chapters 18 to 19, as uh, read out in a dramatic reading. It will be split into various acts as the evening progresses, and the words will be displayed on the screen so that you know which voice uh, is speaking. At certain points during the narrative, you will see the word congregation. It means that you as the congregation will take part in this reading by reading out the lines for that particular section. Uh, please help to make it as dramatic as possible. Uh, please stand as we sing our next song. So, um, we'll have the reading first. Please be seated. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward. Who are you looking for? I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Who are you looking for? I told you, I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him.
First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the assembly that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it, warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the people come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face. Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, then spoke. Did I not see you in the garden with him? I am not. And at that moment, the cock crowed.
Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter their headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them. What accusation do you bring against this man? Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again and summoned Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the crowd. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king? You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the people again. I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, mocking him, and striking him on the face.
Pilate went out again and spoke to the crowd. Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. We have a law, and according to that law, he should die because he claims to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and questioned Jesus. Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the crowd cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Here is your king. Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? We have no king. Then Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Thanks. 
So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. And there they crucified him. And with him they crucified two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the people came to Pilate. What I have written, I have written. And thus the soldiers crucified Jesus. you will lead us in these reproaches. If you feel convicted to do so, then please lead us by reading out these prayers. There are a total of six reproaches, and after each one, we will all collectively say, Jesus, remember me when you come into this kingdom. people, O my church, what have I done to you, or in what have I offended you? I led you forth from the land of Egypt, and delivered you by the waters of baptism, but you have prepared a cross for your Saviour. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I led you through the desert forty years and fed you with manna. I brought you through tribulation and penitence and gave you my body, the bread of heaven, but you prepared a cross for your Savior. Jesus, remember me when you become to your kingdom. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, so you have led to the judgment hall of Pilate. I scourged your enemies and brought you to a land of freedom, but you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. I gave you the water of salvation from the rock, but you have given me gall and left me to thirst. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Cast lots for my 
Then the soldiers took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her. Woman, here is your son. He spoke also to his disciple. Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus knew that all was now finished. I am thirsty. He said this in order to fulfill the scripture. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he spoke. It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
we will, we will now close with a final prayer that we will read out together. Once it is completed, please feel free to depart quietly in silent reflection. Let's read it together. Our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, set your passion, cross and death, between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Grant mercy and grace to the living, rest to the departed, peace and concord to your church, forgiveness to us sinners, and everlasting life and glory for the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are alive and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen.